This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It's Tuesday, June the 11th, and cheers, of course, are in order for the U.S. women's national team. They beat Thailand today 13 to nothing. Uh, that was as impressive a victory as you can possibly get. Alex Morgan, five goals today. I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. Uh, I feel like there should be like some kind of a run rule limit with these soccer matches. I mean, once it gets to like nine to nothing, that maybe even like seven to nothing, just be done with it. Let's be done with it. This is Winning Cures Everything. We do this every day, 10 to 15 minutes a day, sometimes longer whenever my buddy Chris is in with us. Uh, but at least 10 to 15 minutes every day talking about the day's big sports topics. I'll give you a rundown of what we're going to talk about today. First off, though, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. Make it easy on yourself. Go get the YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the podcasts, everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. That is your one-stop shop. Let's jump in. Let's talk about these topics. Kevin Durant injury last night. The Warriors win game five, but it comes at a cost. We're going to talk about whether or not he should have been playing, uh, what the media narrative is, etc. cetera. Uh, Dabo compares himself to Osama bin Laden. Uh, we're not. We're we're gonna just discuss what that means. Uh, Taylor Jenkins hired as the new Memphis Grizzlies head coach. We'll get into him. Florida State is privatizing their athletics department. We'll talk about what that means as well. First off, show is brought to you by BetNow.eu. They make it simple. If you're a recreational gambler, you just want to put a, a few bucks on a game, whatever. Go over and check it out. BetNow.eu. Great online sports book. Great layout. Uh, they've already got the odds up for opening week of college football. So go check that out. Uh, it is betnow.eu. You use promo code WINNING50. That's W I N N I N G 50. WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Go check it out for yourself. Let's go on and talk about topic number one. The Warriors win game five in Toronto by one point. But you could see exactly what Kevin Durant being on the floor meant for that Golden State offense. Uh, They scored 62 points in the first half. And he's there for, you know, a decent portion of it. But from there, once he goes out, you get into the second half, the Raptors have time to adjust. The Warriors only score 44 points in the second half. 22 in the third, 22 in the fourth. And the Raptors had a shot there. I mean, they took the lead in the fourth quarter. They had a shot to go on and wrap this thing up. Instead, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, they get it done. Uh, Should Kevin Durant have been on the floor? People think maybe he rushed back too quick. Now, obviously, a lot of people were questioning beforehand, but why is he not out there? If he's okay, why is he not out there? Well, I think it's fairly simple, right? This is not just a fly-by-night operation. They're not rushing guys back. He had to have been seen by a ton of doctors. I don't think there was anything shady at all going on here. Yes, it is the organization's uh, duty, it is their responsibility to protect the player from themselves. Players want to play, especially in a big-time series like this. It's the NBA Finals. You get a championship. You get a ring. But in this instance, I mean, yes, Kevin Durant obviously wanted to play. But... Knowing what we know now, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. should he have been on the floor? And I would say yes. I think he probably should have been on the floor. And that's I know that goes against the, the narrative of, well, something bad happened, so he shouldn't have been. Sometimes freaky crap accidents just happen. That doesn't mean that anybody was at fault. And I don't know why we get this narrative of everybody has to blame somebody for something. In this instance, it's entirely possible that what he had before was exactly what the doctors thought it was, and it was a calf injury. And in this spot, it could be a freaky coincidence that it was uh, it was the Achilles, which we thought it was over a month ago. There's no way that you're going to be able to tell one way or another, but he, I'm telling you, this guy is worth so much money, he had multiple doctors that looked at him, and they will have to 
tell him, yeah. I mean, look, Kawhi Leonard went through this same thing down in San Antonio where he didn't trust the doctors. Kevin Durant trusted these doctors. Now, he's got a 31 and a half. What is this going to do for free agency, right? Uh, Kevin Durant's got a $31.5 million player option for next year. He could have opted out of that. He's not going to opt out now. I think he stays with the Warriors and rehabs next year because he, he's done for a year. A torn Achilles is you don't just come back from that. It's the same thing that, uh, uh, that Cousins had. And sometimes players don't come back and be the same player that they were. But it's possible Kevin Durant's still young. You know, Kobe couldn't come back from him. But Kobe was like 35. You know, Kevin Durant's 30. There's a big difference there, it's, it, at least in basketball years, right? So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but I am of the opinion that Kevin Durant, yeah, if the doctors cleared him, if he wanted to play, if everything was good to go, the doctors are not going to clear somebody if they don't believe that they can play, if they think that something is going to happen out there. There's way too much money involved, way too much stuff going on. It, it's malpractice. I mean, these guys could go to go to jail for this. So I don't think anything actually popped up. I think this was really just a freak accident. These things happen sometimes. All right, let's jump in. Topic number two, Taylor Jenkins, the new head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, 34 years old. He's an assistant or was an assistant with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, had a good tweet from Mark Giannato. He's a lead columnist over at the Commercial Appeal. He tweeted out today, he said, Taylor Jenkins graduated from Penn's Wharton School of Business. Zach Kleiman uh, has a Duke Law degree. Kleiman, of course, is the uh, the acting general manager. He's the vice president of basketball ops and whatnot. Uh, Richard Cho used to be an engineer for Boeing. He said, the Memphis Grizzlies might be the nerdiest team in the NBA now, and I kind of like it. I will tell you this. This team, it, the, the front office staff, has changed over time, and they are all in on analytics. Absolutely all in. This is the the Oakland A's uh, money ball story, right? These guys all pay attention to numbers. They are really smart at what they do. We'll see if you can win using uh, analytics, right? If, you, if you're specific on analytics, we'll see if you can do that. Uh, I'm curious. I want to see if it actually works or not. But we will see one way or another. Taylor Jenkins, the new head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, he's in in time for Giannis Valanciunas to decide whether or not he wants to stay with the Grizzlies. Uh, Jenkins is in in time to help prep for uh, the NBA draft, etc. So cheers to that. Cheers to the Grizzlies. Uh, excited to see what he can do with, uh, hopefully, John Morant. We'll see. Topic number three. Dabo Sweeney compared himself to Osama bin Laden. Now, it, it's not exactly as it would appear, right? And I probably should have pulled up the exact uh, the exact statement that he made, but he was explaining when he goes into the state of Alabama now, you know, it used to be, oh, look at old Dabo. He comes in here, and he's getting some players, and that's good for him. You know, we're, we're pulling for you over there in Clemson. But now, after beating Alabama two of the last three years in national championship games, and this past year, absolutely drubbing them. He said, when I go into Alabama now, it's like it's like I'm Osama bin Dabo. Now, yes, I get what he was trying to say. No, I do not believe he said it uh, correctly. Or I, I don't believe he should have said that at all. He shouldn't have made that comparison. That's Look, there's a way to joke around. And then there's some things that... Media coverage, they're just not going to let you get away with something. And when you're talking about uh, somebody that was the brains behind the biggest terrorist act in the history of the United States that cost thousands and thousands of lives, it's not going to go over really well with people that don't really get you, right? Uh, this is when Nick Saban went and talked about... Uh, how losing to Louisiana Monroe back in 2007 was like Pearl Harbor. Uh, yeah, it's kind of the same thing here. People aren't going to let you get away with the stuff. Now he's doing this in the off season. It's not in the middle of the season. Dabo, he, as good of a coach as he is, he's not the same star power that Nick Saban is for whatever reason. 
So it's not going to get as big a media uh, firestorm as the Saban stuff would. But still, you got to be smarter than that, buddy. You got to be better than that. Come up with a better a better joke. That's all I'm saying. Uh, topic number four, we'll close out with this. Florida State is privatizing their athletics department. Florida, uh, South Florida, I, I believe Ole Miss, all these, like, it, they're all doing this. And why other teams, like big-time teams, have not done this, I will never understand. This basically protects you from having to turn over uh, Freedom of Information Act requests in, in the same timely manner that the state school would, right? If all of the business is handled by a private organization, then they're not bound by the same laws as a state university. It's completely different. Now, I don't know how there are no rules against this, but all of these schools are big-time brands. They are all big-time companies. They bring in millions and millions of dollars every year. So, of course, they're going to be run as businesses. This makes perfect sense. This is combining the athletics department with, uh, I believe it's Seminole's Boosters, or Seminole Boosters, Inc., I believe is the name of the company. And what it does is it privatizes it. It makes it a business. It makes it where they are under a different sector than a state university. So... I don't know why everybody has not done this. I know there's a lot that have, but if you're a big-time university uh, football program and you want to do things differently, a big-time basketball program, whatever, this is the way to go about it. So I I would suggest everybody pay attention to what Florida State is doing here, and we'll probably get into more of this with Chris later, uh, maybe tomorrow or, or whenever we do that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think this is a smart idea, and I think that other schools – should absolutely look into this. Absolutely look into it. If they want their affairs to be private, then go private. Be a business. You already are a business. You're acting like one anyway. So, cheers to that. Uh, as always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check out everything we've got over there. Subscribe to the show. Share this thing out if you enjoyed it. We do appreciate you being here. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.